Hi everyone, welcome to the overlay bar. Joining me today will be a plastic model enthusiast, a photographer and a fellow gamer, Wonder and Lisa. Hi there. Hello, so... Lisa, what have you been up to? Any uh, new games? Yeah, uh, been uh, debugging my uh, Skyrim mod load order for a few days or so. Sounds pretty tedious. How many mods exactly? Uh, let's see. Enabled mods. It is now up to 804. Oh my. That's quite a hefty number. Oh yes. It uh, takes a bit of wrangling to uh, sort out uh, compatibilities and so on. But got there in the end. Nice. Have you watched any new shows? A lot recently, I have to admit. Uh, I think the most recent uh, movie I watched was Top Gun Maverick. Interesting. I haven't seen that one, so... Fantastic movie. I guess I'll have to check it out at some point. Uh, it really helps that they don't preach politics at you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was uh, more or less stuck just waiting for the Cucurus Doan's Island movie to release. But uh, there still ain't an international release, so that's a bit of a bummer, at least in the cinema front. Although I've heard there's been some Blu-rays going out. Oh, so nice. I'm pretty excited for that. So, do you make some stuff? Do you have a, a channel or...? I uh, don't have uh, any sort of content channels per se, but I, uh, I do have uh, my Instagram that I put... Uh, some of my modeling onto. If I recall correctly, you do have a Twitch channel as well, right? I do have a Twitch, although it's not all that active right now. Well, I shall be looking forward to your eventual return because uh, I watched one of the earlier streams of Skyrim and you seem to be having fun. Yeah, I'll get there eventually. As for me, I've tried uh, doing streams. The attempt one was pretty good, although uh, thanks to the less than stellar quality of my headset, headset mic, which I'm currently using, uh, well, there's been a lot of button bashing in the audio, and as for attempt number two, it didn't really end well, because I kind of forgot to turn off the pause screen when I returned in the middle of in the middle of the stream so it's like one hour of gameplay then there's like one hour of me forgetting to turn off the standby screen and <laughs> about half an hour of gameplay and me apologizing profusely for forgetting about the <laughs> forgetting about the screen and leaving it on <laughs> That does sound familiar. Yeah, the mic I'm using is a Blue Snowball. It's uh, quite a reasonably affordable one and uh, pretty good quality. All things considered. Sounds like a pretty decent mic. Well, my headset is pretty good for... pretty good for, like, general voice chat. It's... It's abysmal when it comes to recording stuff, that's why I use my uh, phone's mic, mostly. Yeah, I used to use a, uh, my Corsair headset, that, uh, the mic on that, it was okay for sort of game stuff, but when it came to uh, talking on streams and such, uh, not so good. Uh, you mentioned that you uh, make some uh, models. Uh, the pictures of which you uh, happen to post on uh, Instagram. Can you elaborate yes. on that? Yes, it's a. Uh, I collect uh, paint uh, Warhammer 40,000 models that I currently haven't played so much. I uh, get more out of the actual modeling and the painting side of things. And my Dark Angel Space Marine army, I decided to kit bash. Uh, some HQ units and a and a character for uh, for that. So I uh, got 
couple of boxes of uh, sort of models to uh, actually do the kit bash from. But uh, it was uh, quite quite enjoyable and turned out quite well. Nice. If I remember correctly, you were using the towel before. Yeah, I still have my towel. Uh, I tend to bounce back and forth between my Dark Angels and my Tau because my brain being what it is, it can only maintain uh, like a, its attention for so long before I have to so like just switch to uh, keep keep my mind going on track. I can relate. There's been a, quite a handful of uh, side projects that I'm... Um like perpetually keeping on the back burner just because I forgot about them once and then I had to switch them for something else because I was burned out on it. Yeah, it is easy to get burnt out on stuff. It's a uh, pain in the ass sometimes. How did you do on your uh, the Gundam that you, you were doing that you were putting the, uh, the lines and so on and adding bits to to the different model of Gundam. Oh yeah, the high grade Universal Century GM. Well, I'm still kind of putting off the the painting bit because, well, I'm kind of hesitant to paint because I'm not really good at painting, and at the same time, my schedule tends to be chaotic at times. So that one's. Partially on the back burner, and uh, partially I'm getting back to it. Yeah, you don't need to worry too much about uh, how how well you paint, because you can always strip it off and redo it. Yep. Because, uh, uh, I mean, with my tau, I've... I've, uh, a number of them, I've stripped multiple times uh, using... 91% isopropyl alcohol and that sort of gets all the paint off and doesn't even damage the plastic which is ideal yeah that that would come pretty handy whenever I go for the acrylics next time speaking of uh, plastic models and uh, related builds what are your ideas on uh, kit bashing if I remember correctly, you've uh, mentioned at uh, one point that you've uh, kitbashed a few uh, Space Marine kits. Yeah, it's uh, basically starting with an idea of uh, what you want to do. You find uh, the base model that is close enough to uh, what you're aiming at doing, and then it's just a case of scouting out all the different parts. So with my Dark Angels Azrael kit bash, I used, let me think, I think it's a character model called Lazar. Uh, yeah, uh, Master Lazarus. I used him as my base. I trimmed some bits of detail off that uh, didn't really work for what I wanted. I found an old out of production uh, plastic model from a previous edition of 40k that had the right head. So I sourced that off uh, eBay. And I had a, a weapon arm left over from another one of my kits that had a sword that was just right for what I wanted. After that, it was basically I was going by some artwork for reference and set out to recreate the pose as best as I could. And it uh, turned out looking uh, pretty decent, all things considered. That's pretty neat. As for my ventures in kid bashing, most, uh, most are kind of on hold because uh, my main two sources for Gunpla are either Amazon where they price gouge pretty hard so affordable stuff is harder to find and uh, the second spot is Hobby Link Japan which is kinda slow on restocking right now so it's gonna be 
A little uh, anniversary of me waiting to get my Zac One sniper type parts. Like I got the gem for the for the shield bit. I'm uh, waiting for the Zac One sniper type for the for the spare shoulder parts and uh, and probably some more components. And uh, there's quite a lot of parts that I'm waiting for because I wanted to recreate the trio of. Uh, Zakus from uh, Mobile Suit Gundam D08 MS Team. What piqued my interest was the fact that uh, aside from the standard armaments they also had some battle damage on them which could be done pretty easily and uh, there was some scavenged weapons for example there's one cannon from a tank there's uh, a shield from the aforementioned gym and well it would have been a Fairly easy kit bash, but I'm just kind of stuck on the restocks. Have you uh, looked on eBay for uh, Gundam parts? On occasions, but uh, they mostly have the have either the same problem as uh, as Amazon, with the price being either two times the regular or, or just like pre-owned. In a way, then most things are coated with paint, and uh, the polycaps are worn out. Mm. And other. Yeah, I've, uh, I've with my uh, my space rings. I've had a well space rings and how I've got uh, had a couple of uh, listings off eBay that I've uh, deliberately scouted out because they were in pretty horrific condition with uh, bad paint and so on and so forth with a view that I could get them nice and cheap, uh, especially for the quantity of models, and then actually fix them up. Because, as I said, uh, assuming that it's not enamel paint on plastic, it's all strippable and easy to do with that. So, so, he, so I've had a order of, I think it was six or seven space marine bikes and one or two attack bikes and i recovered i managed to recover and repair most of them up to a reasonable standard yeah one thing that uh, is something i've been considering for uh, my modeling that might work well for you is uh, when you get get the uh, the harder to find parts and if it's one that you get a part that you're going to need again is to get some uh, silica molding stuff off Amazon and actually cast up molds of uh, the the harder to get parts, so you can just recast them in resin. I've seen a few attempts to recast the uh, gunpla parts. Well, they mostly uh, ended up with varied results. For example. A normal shoulder pauldron was generally alright, but uh, some more complex parts got got the short end of the stick. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, kind of trial and error to begin with, and I suppose with experience you'll get better at uh, better at doing the moulding. But uh, initially, it can be very hit and miss. Yep. I also found uh, a new line of uh, Games Workshop models that were released recently. And uh, well, I do have uh, general knowledge of uh, Warhammer 40k, but I still do have some gaps. Can you tell me what are these? Ah, uh, the Leagues of Votan. Uh, they are the new versions of what used to be called the Squats, which are basically space dwarves. Interesting. Yeah, they are looking very, very good. I'm, I am se seriously tempted with uh, uh, picking up some of them when they come out. I also found this emotional support horse or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am... It's either something purely decorational that denotes the squad leader, or it's something defensive, I don't know, like a 
shield generator or what have you. And the design, because they have a very sort of, kind of a mix of Scottish and Nordic stuff going on. So that would have been a very sort of a culturally relevant symbol for that kind of background inspiration. I suppose. I just found it a bit odd that the backpack horse kind of looked like uh, a cannon or something like that, but someone put a golden horse head on the end of it instead. No, the, the doohickey next to it is a shoulder mount grenade launcher, I believe. Mm, nice. That's the grey thing right here, right? Yep, that's the one. Nice. Uh, if you've seen the Space Wing Terminators, these guys are basically the squat equivalent of it, but a little more advanced. So, b basically it's Space Dwarves in body armor. Well, yes. the power armor from game. Yeah, from so basically, yeah. yeah, so basically the background they've got with uh, the Leagues of Photon now is all of their uh, equipment is basically the same root origin as the Imperium of Man, but whereas uh, the Imperium over the millennia have uh, stagnated and they fell into sort of superstitious ways and uh, sort of like any actual developing of new stuff and advancing of technology was seen as heresy. So they really stagnated and not progressed much and until recently whereas the squats the leagues of Votan, uh, they never had that issue and while they were separated from uh, the Imperium as it were they've continued to uh, work on adapt and upgrade and improve all of the tech that they've got so it's the same roots as the Imperium's uh, tech but improved <laughs> all right that seems interesting so it'd be like if our society fragmented into two and half of it was lost for sort of thousands millions of years and then we meet the the other half again and during all of that time we haven't technologically advanced at all it's all the same tech, but a lot more superstition around it. And then we meet our cousins again, and they've uh, just continued developing and advancing their tech. So it's like so the like meme uh, with the Daniel and Cooler Daniel? Uh, who? This one. Oh, yes! <laughs> Yes, Daniel and the cooler Daniel. <laughs> yeah, very much. <laughs> the bolters look pretty cool. Correct me if I'm wrong, I I don't know whether it's a bolter or a... Yeah, I will find another article for you because there's a, a few interesting ones, one of which is uh, their weapons. Oh, nice. So that's that's a link for the regular guys. Oh, right into the browser. Okay, so okay, that's a pretty nifty addition. Yeah, I do like the look of them. They look uh, like the characters from the Deep Rock Galactic video game. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I can I can imagine they look like. Just charging in and yelling, Rock and Stone! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing with the uh, Imperium is they see AI of any kind as being heretical. Whereas uh, the Leagues of Votan, they've got no problem with AI and they even give uh, AI uh, sort of places in their society. So these artificial beings just uh, live and work, well, quote unquote, live and work alongside the regular members of the uh, their society. <laughs> so, if the empire 
Empire, uh, the Imperium ever actually discovers that they've uh, embraced and given mechanical beings with AI running them sort of equal standing in their society, I don't think they're going to be very happy. But yeah, that's all of the uh, the various uh, the guns and shiz that they have. Yeah. So I think they've actually there was another race that's uh, connected to the Tau Empire called the Demio who gave them uh, ion technology and so on and they've always been a very uh, squat like race so I've got a feeling they've actually rolled them into the leagues of Votan because as you'll see from some of uh, these weapon uh, bits and pieces uh, they've got ion technology that is very very similar to the ion tech that the Tau have Yep, and uh, some of those guns kind of remind me of the regular nerf guns. Oh, yes. Like, for example, the bolt shotgun. Yeah, I, I love the idea of them sort of taking that sort of tech and just sort of branching it out so you've got sort of bolt revolvers, bolt shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> Do the bolt shotguns shoot like regular shells but with bolts, or...? Flechette rounds or what? To be with bolt guns, they fire high explosive shells. So I imagine it's going to be that, but more shotgun like. So it's probably going to be a larger, sort of like a damage pattern. Well, like like you might imagine with a shotgun. So, like, more DACA. Oh, yes, much more DACA. <laughs> Alright, that's pretty nice to hear. On an unrelated note, uh, I saw that uh, you had acquired a copy of Ark Survival Evolved. Oh, right, yeah, it's, uh, it came up on Steam. I haven't actually uh, got round to playing any of it yet, but I will eventually. <laughs> well, I did, and uh, I've uh, probably told you about some of the hijinks that I've encountered. For example... The ever deadly ants <laughs> that I just stumbled upon went onto the island. There were ants. I went into the forest. There were ants. But did they try to eat you? Mm, yes, very much yes. Like it uh, isn't a problem if there's like two or three going towards you, but uh, when the amount increases, then. Uh, well, if you haven't uh, upgraded your uh, running speed, then uh, well, then it's kind of dangerous to the player. Thankfully, keeping the real thing isn't quite so dangerous. <laughs> yep. Uh, other things to watch out for is the true dons. Those, they kind of look like the small guys that uh, you can see on the shore. I uh, went on uh, gathering meat and leather so that I could craft some decent boots in the game and there was uh, one of those true dons and the little bugger just uh, rushed me and somehow it also has a poisonous bite so I kind of fainted on the way to my base and I got eaten. Uh, not very good. Yep, not very good. And then I spent a few hours just sitting on the wiki and uh, looking up everything that <laughs> might be on the map from that point onwards. As you do. Yep, as I do. Yeah, it can be quite funny when uh, games bug out on you in completely unexpected ways. That's too as well. Like uh, with my modding of Skyrim, uh, I had a problem with some of the uh, the mods I installed for children in the world, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of the children in the world they had no skin or heads. It was just floating eyeballs and teeth. <laughs> and I had another one where they all just had very, very smooth, shiny, rounded skin with no hair. Um, it just looks creepy. If I recall correctly, there have been some uh, 
40k games uh, released uh, recently as well, right? Recent one coming out is Dark Tide, I believe. Another one, I'm not sure if it's out yet or coming out, called Chaos Gate. They, they look uh, interesting. I heard of the one where it was Sisters of Battle in VR. I don't think I've seen that one. Sounds interesting. Yep. So the the Dark Tide is it the is it the first person shooter or a strategy uh, yeah. game or Dark Tide is a first person shooter. It's a full player co op along the lines of Left for Dead, Vermin Tide and other ones like that. Okay, that rings a bell. And what's your favorite uh, 40k games? Uh, mine's probably Dawn of War. Yeah, I, th I think certainly Dawn of War that had a fantastic modding community. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with. And then uh, they kind of ruined the sequels. Yeah, number two is good game mechanically, but the community just didn't come across with it, and it's just didn't seem to uh, gain quite the following it, you, uh, that the first one had. And number three was just meh. Yep, and uh, I haven't really played a lot of uh, a lot of the games myself. Although I picked up the Soulstorm of the of the Dawn of War DLCs. And, oh yes, uh, and I've had a quite a blast uh, with that. Although I'm still waiting for the Total War, right? Hmm. I'm waiting for it to uh, go on discount because that seems like fun. Yeah, I tend to wait for games to go on discount. It take takes a lot for me to actually decide to uh, plonk the money down uh, on a pre-order. If you could make a game uh, within any universe or fiction. Uh, how would you make it? Which features would you add? That's a tough question. It's uh, all down to what style. But mm. up until they ruined it, I would have said Doctor Who would have been great for a uh, sort of a advent role play adventure kind of thing. But. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've uh, lost a lot of my uh, love for Doctor Who after, well, the way it's been treated in yeah. uh, recent years. After the newest in iterations. To my recollection, uh, there has been an attempt to make a Doctor Who action-adventure video game within the LEGO Dimensions crossover, oh, right. but there's... That was pretty long ago, and uh, that game is pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah, the so, thing is, when you when you start uh, having a go at your fan base, calling them bigoted and racist, sexist, all the other ists, it's, you can't be too surprised when people actually stop turning up for your product. That more or less summarizes my falling out with Star Wars. Oh, yes. And Doctor Who as well. Yeah, Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who. Anyways, um, do you have any plans for upcoming content on your Instagram, Twitch? Um, I am going to try and get back to my... Uh, painting my Warhammer this weekend if I can motivate myself enough. So that 
that will be going up onto my Instagram as and when I do them. Uh, might possibly I'll see what else I can come up with. And uh, what about the Twitch thing? Yeah, the Twitch thing. I once I am sure that my Skyrim is stable and I've been able to play for a bit without it crashing on me left, right, and centre. I will probably start kick off sort of doing that on Twitch again because yeah. with the amount of mods I have installed, it takes some time for the game to actually launch itself so when you get a crash and then it takes a good like five minutes or so for the game to actually run again it's hardly conducive to keeping an audience <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of similar to my attempts to to set up the ps3 emulator for uh, streaming but uh, my computer starts uh, sounding like a rice cooker or something, uh, something that makes similar sounds when an I run it for too long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah started sounding like an asthmatic racehorse. <laughs> yep. Or a mammoth with a cold. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any more topics? Uh, there's nothing that really comes to mind at the moment. Because I'm kind of running out of uh, the ones on my uh, notes, yes. so I suppose I'll call it the day. Yep, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. I suppose, Shirtlight signing out. See ya. <laughs>